Now let's talk about how to turn those conjugate roots into factors. They're going to be a little different from the roots that we turned into factors in the previous lesson. So first, we want to line up our conjugate roots vertically and add them down. So I'm going to take 2 plus the square root of 3, and then 2 minus the square root of 3, and we're going to add downwards. So 2 plus 2 is 4. Square root of 3 minus the square root of 3, that becomes 0. So we actually just have 4. This is going to represent our m value in our final answer. Then, step 2, multiply or FOIL the conjugate roots. So let's take 2 plus the square root of 3, and then we're going to multiply that with 2 minus the square root of 3. So we need to FOIL this. So the first terms, 2 times 2 is 4. The last terms, 2 times negative root 3 is negative 2 root 3. The inside terms is positive 2 root 3. And then the last terms, positive root 3 times negative root 3 just gives us negative 3. Now what you'll notice is that the middle terms are always going to cancel out. Negative 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 is going to give us 0, so we're really just left with 4 minus 3, and that gives us 1. That's going to be our answer for n, our value for n in our final part. So in part 3, we need to combine the answers from part 1 and part 2 into a trinomial of this form. So I'm going to go ahead and start by writing x squared and then I'm going to put an x and then close my parentheses. Then it says this minus m, that's going to be our answer from part 1, but with the opposite sign. So our answer from part 1 was positive 4, and we're going to use the opposite sign, negative 4, as the coefficient for our x term. Then this plus n at the end, that's our answer from part 2 with the same sign. So since we had a positive 1 in part 2, that's going to be our third term in our trinomial. So this is going to be one of the trinomials that we use in finding our final polynomial equation. Here we just want to practice finding the conjugate root and making the conjugate pairs into a factor. So in the first example, we have 2 minus 5i and then the conjugate root would be 2 plus 5i. Now we want to take these and follow the steps we did before to find our trinomial factor. So first we're going to line them up and add them, 2 minus 5i and then 2 plus 5i. And then when we add down we get 4 and then these cancel out so we're actually just left with 4. Then we want to FOIL are two pairs. So we have 2 minus 5i times 2 plus 5i. So when we FOIL this we get 2 times 2 is 4. We get a positive 10i, a negative 10i, and then a negative 25i squared. So make sure you're multiplying carefully as you FOIL. Then this middle term is going to cancel out positive 10i minus 10i. So we're left with 4. Now remember, i squared is really the square root of negative 1 squared. So i squared is the same thing as negative 1. So when we multiply negative 25 times negative 1, you actually get a positive 25. So our answer to part 2 is actually going to be 29. So then we can go ahead and write our final factor, our trinomial. It starts off with x squared, and then we want to take the opposite sign from part 1, so a negative 4x, and then the same sign of part 2, plus 29. And this is going to be our trinomial we'll use to find our polynomial equation. 
So I want you to pause, try this with example two, and check back with me when you finish. So the first part is finding the conjugate root negative four minus square root of seven. So remember, you're only changing the sign of either the irrational or the complex part of the root. You're not changing the first one. So in part one, when you add straight down, you should get negative eight. When you FOIL the two conjugate pairs, you should get positive 19. So when you combine them for your trinomial, you should have x squared plus 8x plus 19. So don't forget the signs.